Welcome to our lecture online and in this uh, set of videos here we're going to be tackling a new topic in chemistry. We're going to be dealing with liquids and solids, why uh, elements or molecules come together to form either solids, liquids or gases for that matter. And it all has to do with the combination of intermolecular forces. Reasons, there's different reasons why molecules feel forces of attraction to each other and we'll go through each of those particular reasons. There's different kinds of force of attraction and we'll cover those one at a time in each videos, in each of the videos that will be coming up. So we have molecules that feel a force of attraction and then molecules will also be moving, vibrating, moving around due to their thermal uh, energy that they contain or another way to think about it is due to the kinetic energy that they contain. As it turns out, as the temperature goes up of a, of a substance uh, made up of atoms and molecules, the kinetic energy of those molecules goes up. They begin to vibrate more, they begin to move more, so the motion and vibration goes up as well. And so then it becomes a combination of if the motion and vibration gets violent enough, they begin to overwhelm the intermolecular forces trying to keep the molecules together. The higher the temperature, the more they move, the more that motion will try to cause them to break free from one another. And that's how solids will turn into liquids and eventually liquids will turn into gases. And so, for example, if we look at water, water will be solid, starting at, of course, zero Kelvin, which is absolute zero, the coldest temperature that can exist in the universe, all the way up to 273 degrees Kelvin. So for the first 273 degrees, of course, 273 degrees Kelvin is the same as zero degrees centigrade. That's where solid water turns into liquid water. Then another 100 degrees later, when the temperature then gets to be 100 degrees centigrade, the liquid then turns into a gas. Actually, it turns into a vapor. As it gets hotter, it turns into a gas. But for general purposes, we can just think of it as a gas. Now for helium, for example, helium will be solid starting at absolute zero to only one degree above absolute zero. At that point, the thermal action, and of course at one degree Kelvin, that can be very much, is enough to break up the bonding, the forces holding helium close together and turns it into a liquid. Then at four degree Kelvin, the agitation, the thermal agitation is sufficient to begin to turn helium into a gas. So why is there so much of a difference between helium and water? It turns out we can calculate the amount of energy that is contained in the molecules through a simple formula. The kinetic energy in a, in a set of molecules is equal to the number of moles times a constant associated with the type of molecule that exists. For example, this constant, C sub V, is the coefficient of, of uh, heat retention, is equal to 3 over 2 times R. Um, for a, mo a monatomic molecule, and it's 7 over 2R for a triatomic molecule. It happens to be 5 over 2R for a diatomic molecule, so it increases. The amount of energy that a molecule can absorb uh, increases with the number of atoms that um, uh, are contained within that molecule. R is the gas constant, 8.315 joules per mole per Kelvin. And so at some, degree, some temperature, let's say 25 degrees centigrade, which is 298 Kelvin, you can actually calculate the number of moles per, uh, the number of kilojoules per mole that is contained within the gas. And so for a monatomic gas, it would be about 3.7 kilojoules per mole. And for a triatomic gas, it would be 8.7 kilojoules per mole. And if that energy is enough to break the intermolecular forces so that they actually can move relative to each other, then a solid will turn into liquid, and eventually, if there's enough energy put into the gas or into the substance, then it actually will turn into a gas. So what we know is that as molecules come together, they begin to feel those intermolecular forces. There are forces of attraction, but then usually when you bring them too close together, the force of attraction becomes forces of repulsion. So you see that there is a particular point, it can be different for different molecules, where the force of attraction is the greatest relative to the force of repulsion, and so that would be the position where the two atoms will, or the three atoms, or whatever it may be, will position themselves to make the strongest bond. So for example, hydrogen to hydrogen can bond in such a way that the distance between the two centers of the hydrogen atoms is about 74 picometers apart. At that point, you have the strongest bond. Now, if, um, if the molecules vibrate sufficiently, they can build up enough speed, enough vibrational motion that could break the bonds apart and therefore solid hydrogen molecules can turn into liquid um, 
uh, hydrogen molecules can turn to gas hydrogen molecules simply by putting more and more energy into it, by putting more and more heat into it, by making it move more and more. So again, it's that interplay between uh, the molecular movement due to the kinetic energy and the force of attraction due to the various ways in which molecules can stay together. For example, argon to argon bonding is very, very weak. They're noble gases. There's a lot of symmetry to those molecules. There's not a lot of ways in which molecules can can stay together, and so therefore the intermolecular forces between argon molecules is very, very weak, so it doesn't take a lot of energy to break those molecules apart and turn them into a gas. Same with helium. Helium and argon are very similar in that way, so therefore that is why helium turns into a liquid at very low temperatures and even turns into a gas if still at very low temperatures. So the whole theory is simply an interplay between the amount of energy the molecules have and the amount of bond strength there is with the various ways in which these molecules stay together. Now, one more thing that I wanted to talk so, about. To summarize, what makes a solid a solid? What makes a liquid a liquid? What makes a gas a gas? Well, those intermolecular forces, if the molecules don't vibrate enough, those intermolecular forces will lock the molecules into a certain position and they will stay there. And even though kinetic energy will cause them to vibrate, the vibration isn't sufficient to break the bonds loose and the molecules will stay in place. At that point, the molecules form a solid. If more heat is added to that solid and the molecules vibrate more and more violently, eventually the vibration will actually cause the bonds to break loose and the molecules begin to roll over one another. There's not enough energy to, to pull the molecules apart. There's still enough intermolecular forces to keep them close together, but they're not strong enough anymore because the vibration of the kinetic energy is so violent that the molecules will begin to roll over each other. And at that point, that becomes a liquid. It stays together, it bonds together, but not strong enough to, salt, to settle down into a solid. So that's when the substances become liquids. And then if you continue to add enough energy to the substance, then the energy becomes so violent and so uh, strong that, well, energy doesn't really become strong, but the motion becomes so strong that the molecules can actually break free from each other and then the individual molecules can, can uh, depart from the I would say the conglomerate of molecules there, and then it turns into a gas, and they actually break free from each other. The energy is enough to pull away the, the molecules so that the force of the molecules can no longer keep them together. And at that point, the substance becomes a gas. So it's all about how much energy the atoms and the molecules have versus the molecular, the intermolecular forces trying to keep them together. And at the various combinations of strength of the bonds, and the forces that keep them together, and the vibration and the movement caused by the kinetic energy that will determine whether or not the substance is a solid, a liquid, or a gas, and at what temperatures that occurs. So typically speaking, molecules that do not hang together very strongly when the forces between them are relatively weak, they will have very low what we call melting points and very low boiling points. Molecules that tend to stick together fairly strongly, like water for example, they will have very high melting points and very high boiling points. Although of course, there are many substances that have much higher melting points and boiling points than water as well, but relative to helium, argon or so, it's a pretty strong bond. And in the next so many videos, I will show you the details of the various types of intermolecular force that exist so that we can understand uh, those forces and so we can have a better concept of the kinetic theory when it comes to solids and liquids.